For this DC motor build, the following materials were used. One 9cm pencil sharpened on both ends, a 3cm by 2cm by 1cm styrofoam piece, 1 meters of 0.6mm copper coil, 4 angled brackets, 4 2mm screws, 2 5mm wood screws, 2 magnets, 1 9 volt transformer, a 25cm by 30cm by 2cm wooden board, 2 thick conductive wires, 2 wires with alligator clips, a multimeter, sandpaper, sticky tape, both duct tape and clear tape, a screwdriver and scissors. Now for the method. 1. The pencil, which will act as an armature for the motor, allowing it to freely rotate and not translate itself towards either of the magnets, was pushed through the center of the styrofoam on the 3cm by 2cm plane, such that one edge of the pencil is 1cm away from the styrofoam. The styrofoam will act as the coil base. This was so the other end, the long end of the pencil, had enough room to build and attach the commutator. 2. The copper coil, which will act as a current carrying conductor, was wrapped around the styrofoam piece, but first, the initial 8cm of the copper wire was adequately standard to allow the wire to conduct electricity. A multimeter, with its beep function, was used to clarify whether the coil could conduct electricity after sanding. With 13 centimeters of the wire sticking out, the wire was wrapped around the styrofoam 55 turns on each side to ultimately create a coil base with 110 turns. The end was cut and sanded, similarly to the other edge, so the ends of the coil could be connected together to allow a current to continually travel through. Note that this side also had 13 centimeters of copper coil sticking out. The sides were sticking out to have enough coil to build the commutator. Both edges of the wire were folded in half in a very tight manner. 4. To create the commutator component of this motor, the ends of the coil was attached to the long end of the pencil with sticky tape. The placement of the edges of the coil was very specific. The ends must be vertically apart when the turns of the coil are in a vertical alignment. This also ensures that the ends will be horizontally apart when the turns of the coil are in a horizontal alignment. This was to ensure the brushes and the commutator were at contact when the torque was at a minimum. Once the alignment was ensured, the ends were held down onto the pencil by a strip of sticky tape. 5. One pair of angled brackets were placed on the long edge plane and installed such that the brackets were enough distant apart to allow the motor to be confined in the axial direction, whilst at a suitable height above the surface to freely spin. The pencil was placed between the brackets. 6. The two 5mm wood screws were screwed down onto the corners of the wooden board. One end of both of the rigid wires were wrapped around the screw. The rigid wires were connected to the commutator such that they would maintain contact with the commutator whilst not pushing against the commutator. To ensure the rigid wire stayed in that position, it was strapped down with duct tape. 7. For the stator, i.e. the base of the motor holding the magnets, the other pair of angled brackets were placed along the short edge plane of the wooden board, approximately 2mm away from the edge of the copper coil turn. It was strapped down with duct tape to ensure that the positioning of the magnets were correct before screwing it down permanently. 8. Conductive wires with alligator clips were attached to the screws and these wires were attached to a transformer to ensure a current can flow through a closed circuit system. 9. The other ends of the alligator clip wires were connected to the battery. The motor did not spin sufficiently, so a manual nudge was given to get the coil properly spinning. So. What's happening here? As the coil was placed in the magnetic field, the current carrying conductor will experience a unique force known as the Lorentz force due to the motor effect, able to be quantitatively measured via the following equation. F equals BIL sine theta. Note that the current flows from the positive to negative terminal. Thus, the current flows in the direction like so. Following the right hand palm rule, the north end of the magnetic field will impose an upwards force on the conductor, whilst the southern end will experience a downwards force, hence the armature spins creating torque. Torque of the motor can be calculated using the following equation. Torque equals NBIA sine theta. However, as the coil rotates, the angle it makes of the magnetic field changes, thus changing the current, which can cause the coil to rotate back and forth. Thus, a split ring commutator is added. Note that when the coil reaches a rotational position of 90 degrees, the magnetic field causes the upper side of the coil to push upwards, whilst the lower side pushes downwards. Downwards. This cancels the forces out resulting in no motion. Hence, the coil needs to lose connection with the brushes to allow inertia to continue the positive torque motion. As it rotates 180 degrees, the positive and negative terminals have flipped, reversing the current direction, and thus continue maintaining a positive torque value. Now, discussing the phenomena known as back EMF. Note that a current carrying conductor experienced in external magnetic field will follow Faraday's law and its proportionality, where the induced forward electromotive force, aka the supplied voltage, also referred to as the forward EMF, is directly proportional to the change in magnetic flux, which is the amount of magnetic field lines entering a certain area. As power is supplied to the coil, it will accelerate due to the effects of the forward EMF and the induced magnetic field. With the addition of the commutator, the coil is allowed to continually spin. Note that rotational kinetic energy is required to keep an object in motion, nonetheless increasing its velocity. If the motor continues to spin, that means the rotational kinetic energy increases indefinitely, breaking the law of energy conservation. So where is all this energy coming from then? This is where Lenz's law applies. The law states that a current will be induced by the conductor, such that it opposes the change of flux experience. Lenz's law introduces back EMF into the motor to oppose the initial direction of motion, i.e. the forward EMF, disabling the indefinite increase 
use of energy and hence complying with the law of conservation of energy. To analyze back EMF in this motor, let's analyze separate sections. On the northern side of the magnetic field, it is initially moving upwards, meaning the forward EMF will produce a current out of the page. According to Lenz's law, an opposing force downwards will be produced, thus producing a current into the page. The opposite occurs on the southern side. Due to the coil moving downwards, a current out of the page will be produced to oppose the Lorentz force, producing an upwards force. So as this coil rotates, there will be a current continually being produced to oppose the forward EMF, creating a force known as back EMF. So the faster the coil rotates, the larger the back EMF is produced. This lowers the net voltage in the motor such that eventually, the back EMF cancels out with the forward EMF and the net voltage in the coil reaches zero. Zero net voltage implies no induced current, hence no more torque is produced, forcing the coil to rotate at a constant velocity, maintaining constant kinetic energy. Hence, the production of back EMF allows the DC motor to comply with the law of conservation of energy, which was explained through Faraday's and Lenz's law. This then wraps up the video on how I built this DC motor.